Finally, a Cayman that isn't performance limited purely so that it doesn't overshadow its bigger brother, the 911. This is the result of enthusiasts screaming for the ultimate mid-engine, six-speed manual track car. Finally, no more bullshit. We don't have a downsize engine just because this car is a Cayman. We've got the motor straight out of a 911 Carrera S. That means 385 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque out of a 3.8 liter flat six. This car is also equipped with a six-speed manual transmission that is so beautiful. Oh my God, Porsche kills it with their manuals and this is no exception. The linkage is so smooth. Everything is so tight. The throws are extremely short. I mean, if I can think of a perfect gearbox, this is it right here in the Cayman GT4. This car is all about weight savings. We've got a curb weight of under 3,000 pounds. That means this car is insanely fun in the twisties. Yeah, it's not as fast as a GT3 in a straight line, but this car grips so well. Part of that is thanks to the trickle-down economics that Porsche often does. We've got the front suspension from a GT3. We've got a motor from a Carrera S and a steering wheel inspired by the 918 Spider. We're grabbing stuff from cars that typically are of an upper echelon to the Cayman and plopping them right down here in one of the most brilliant chassis ever created. Now, this is a mid-engine car, not a rear-engine car like the GT3, so you're more confident in the turns because you know that if you push it a little bit too far, this car is gonna be really controllable if you lose it, whereas a GT3, because of all that weight in the back, once the momentum gets going, you're gonna spin like a top. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yeah. The power doesn't really come on until the upper RPM range, but when you get up past 5,000, 6,000 RPMs, all the way up to its 7,500 RPM red line. Oh my God, it feels quick and it sounds absolutely brilliant. My only gripe with the manual transmission is the gearing, while it's probably optimal for a racetrack, it doesn't really allow you to ring through the gears on the road. First gear goes 46 miles an hour, second gear goes 82. Obviously, you're not really gonna be going over 82 miles an hour often, especially on twisty back roads. So that means you're pretty much limited to leaving the car in second or third gear. Well, that's all right because the steering makes up for it. We've got the electronic steering from a 911, but that doesn't mean that it's bad. You hear the words electronic and you think, oh, that probably means you lose road feel. Absolutely not. This car is incredibly connected to the road. Oh my God. Listen to that exhaust. We've got the sports exhaust. And click the loud button and oh, that is what a flat six should sound like. Oh my. <laughs> you somewhat miss that it doesn't rev all the way up to the ridiculous 9,000 RPMs of the GT3. But oh, unless you've driven one of those back to back, to the Cayman GT4, you won't really regret your decision. If you're looking for a modern day man and machine all out enthusiast car, this is it right here. It is a very, very raw driving experience. Oh my God, the steering wheel is the perfect size. This is the Porsche Sport steering wheel that was derived from the 918 Spider, and man, does it give you the perfect control on the road. I wish the car was a little bit faster, I'll be honest there. Imagine if they put a GT3 motor inside of a Cayman GT4. How ridiculous would that be? You're not gonna have too much more fun than this in a tight, twisty back road. Oh my. 
I mean, can you see how much fun I'm having right now? This is unbelievable. The car comes standard with Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires, which are incredibly sticky. This car actually has Dunlops on it. That combined with six piston brakes in the front and four pistons in the rear means stopping and road control is just unbelievable. You've got the option for carbon ceramics. This car we're testing today does have the carbon ceramics. Uh, and you've got your typical Porsche options in the interior. Of course, a little bit limited because it is a Cayman GT4 and you don't care as much about it. But we've got some extended leather everywhere. That's one thing I love about this car. It's not just a balls to the wall, track focused car. It is, but it's also got the amenities inside that make it comfortable and it, you're not compromising. You don't just have a car that, you know, a friend hops in and is like, what the hell? This is basically a bare carbon tub. You've got nothing. You've actually got some decent amenities. I'm, it's so hot outside right now. I've got the AC going. Yeah, sure. You can do an air conditioning, radio delete and all that. But really, unless you're a professional driver, you're not going to be shaving those extra one tenth off of your lap time uh, often enough to make up for having those little creature comforts that this car has. You've got a nice LCD display. I love the tachometer. You've got three round instrument displays, big center mounted tachometer. You've got a speedo in a position you can't even really see, but that doesn't matter. Now this is interesting. Clicking the sport button does not put the car in some sort of advanced sport mode. It actually activates active rev matching. So we're gonna click that. And apparently this is supposed to make me downshift like a pro. I don't think I would ever activate this uh, unless there was some serious money on the line where perfect downshifts were required. But let's see. <laughs> oh my God. It provides the perfect amount of throttle to... <laughs> That's too artificial for me, but man. If you can be that good yourself, you're doing something right. The crazy part is how rigid this chassis is. I've been driving in quote unquote normal mode the whole time and man, does it feel stiff as hell. We've activated sport mode for the suspension and already you can tell instantly how much harder this car rides. I don't really think it's necessary for anything other than a pure glass smooth racetrack, but it is something if you want a little bit extra control on the road. Right now, your options, if you want an incredible performance track-oriented Porsche that's brand new with a manual, you've really only got two options. You've got the 911R and you've got the Cayman GT4. And a 911R is $600,000, $800,000, so that's just straight up ridiculous. This car, a little over $100,000, and you are getting one of the best sports cars ever produced. I love the transmission so much. I literally could talk about it all day. This is the best manual transmission I have ever driven without a doubt. The steering is telepathic. The turn in is so sharp. The car feels like it's on rails. It's rear wheel drive. It's such a pleasure in the turns that it's almost indescribable. It feels like you're driving a car on railroad tracks around the turns that are banked. It almost feels like you can hit turns at any speed without losing it. The interior is really comfortable. These are the standard seats. You can also opt for the carbon seats that are very, very limited in their adjustability. They're also straight out of a 918 Spider. If you want a real, real track experience, maybe opt for that. But, oh man, is this comfortable on the road. Things I don't like as much about the car. I think the gearing is a little bit too tall. You don't get to play with the gears as much as I would like. I mean, I'm going 34 miles an hour and I'm only at 3000 RPMs in second gear. I'd like to be able to rip through the gears. Uh, you don't get that as much in this car. I do wish that the Cayman GT4 came with more power. I don't know if I'm the first one to say that, but if this car had 500 horsepower, whew, would it be an unstoppable, absolutely out of this world car? Now I'm not saying that 385 is not enough. It is, but that little extra something would be nice. Before I let you go, just listen to this exhaust. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, that's so good. <laughs> I love this car. It's, whew, 
It is unbelievable. This has got to be in one of, I'm going to add it to the top five most fun, best driving cars Vehicle Virgins has ever reviewed. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse our channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video.